So I'm in uh, Whitechapel and uh, once upon a time was uh, for 10 weeks it was the autumn of terror the eyes of the world was on this place um, and I'm gonna go around and do you know what I often think like today 136 years on people are probably um, my apologies for my hair there are probably unaware of what happened here uh, for instance like outside of here um, if Polly Nichols body was where it was you'd lit people would literally have to step over it so um, I bet people for every all the thousands of people who use this every single day they are probably oblivious to to that fact so uh, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna show you all the murder locations 136 years on Morrissey said in 2004 stood on the stage and he said there's something about Whitechapel not much but something so back in 1888, this this used to be Bucks Row. Um, today it's called Darewood Street. So the name changed four years after the murder, because obviously the neighbours didn't want to be linked with uh, the notoriety. Um, so this whole area has completely changed. The only thing that's here, um, which was at the time of the murders, so that building was put up in 1886, two years, and. Um, Basically, Polly Nichols' body would have been exactly there. Uh, I do often wonder, you know, this, that's a new Whitechapel station. And, uh, you know, probably that's used by thousands of people every day. And uh, they're probably oblivious to, to that fact that, you know, if it, 136 years now, but... Um, as I said, the, the murder, the body, would have just been exactly around there. So people would have literally stepped over it. So that was where the very first murder of Polly Nichols took place. Just here. So I'm just on Hanbury Street, which is um, the location of the second murder, Annie Chapman. Um, the comedian, Bud Flanagan, was born over there and this this side is pretty much as it was in the time of the murder um, that's Brick Lane down there um, that was where David Copeland planted the bomb in 1999 it was moved um, but initially he kind of left it there but um, yeah so Annie Chapman so there used to be a big 29 on here which was referenced to 29 Hanbury Street um, so it's, I was here in October and it, it was still there. But um, Annie Chapman's body would have, so this would have been the, the entrance and uh, she was found in the back. And uh, it's a shame I can't really show you the spot because it's kind of behind there. But um, yeah, this is where Annie Chapman, the second victim of Jack the Ripper was killed in 1888. So this is um, Angel Alley, uh, better known back then in 1888 as Piss Alley, <laughs> clues in the name. And that was where Pearlie Paul waited with her client, um, why Martha Tabram entertained theirs and then obviously was never seen again. Um, but Richard Jones, in my opinion, the best reprologist certainly the most busiest he um, he said to me obviously London's very different now but if you look hard enough you can still see 1888 and nothing epitomises that for me than uh, this alley which is called Gunthorpe Street um, so that's the White Hart pub that was where George Chapman had his barber shop in the cellar and he was Frederick Abelan's chief suspect but yeah, I mean, you know, you can just literally, if you look at the alley and you just go right back to 1888 and you could imagine, you know, this, there was no sanitising, there was no, this, this road would have just been full of hay and horse dump and it would have been basically the perfect ground for a serial killer. 
So, just over the road from Spitalfields Market yeah. is Puma Court. Now this really captures the, uh, the spirit of 1888 for me. As, as uh, I think I've said before, Richard Jones said the East End's changed so much, but if you look hard enough, it's still there. And uh, yeah, Puma Court, you could just imagine people staggering around drunk and this was an absolute slum in Jack the Ripper's day and um, houses around here they go for something between like 5 and 12 million um, absolutely staggering yeah real east end Victorian times so what I was telling you is um, that's a ripper tour, um, speaking French. So that just shows you how much kind of interest and tourists come to the East End to, uh, to, fa to find out all about the Autumn of Terror. So I'm just on Henrique Street. But back in 1888, this used to be Berner Street. So I'm going to show you where Catherine Eddowes was killed. So she was the, the first victim on the night, the double event. Um, many ripperologists believe that Jack was caught in the act um, and he never quite got out of his system. And that was why she just had a, a throat cut. Many of her call her Lucky Liz. Um, yeah, doesn't she doesn't sound lucky to me, but you get the picture anyway. So, um, so the, her body. So obviously, this was um, Raw Houses, Duffield Yards was here. You know, it's quite ironic how both murders of the double event, uh, the locations, Liz Stride and Catherine Eddowes. So today, they're both schools. But um, yeah, so her body would have been. I mean, I did come down here with Richard Jones a couple of years back, and he kind of pointed out to me. Um, so, so as I said, these were houses. So her body would have been found just down there, literally where my, the end of that tip is. Um, as I said, many believe there was only one way in Duffield Yard, and many believe that when um, the horse shied away, basically Jack was lurking in there and then of course he's ran off and then within the, within an hour um elizabeth sorry catherine eddowes was dead and uh she was seriously mutilated so um and just to give you an idea as well so the number one probably uh suspect I think most people commonly refer to as Aaron Kosminski. So he lived just down there into the, if you walk down there, you'd have literally been to see his house. So he lived, uh, Providence Row, I think it was called back then. Obviously it's gone now, but he lived there, um, with his sister, I think it was. Basically when all the, the five murders happened, um, the other suspect as well, Charles Cross, his mother lived quite nearby somewhere over there. I'm not quite sure where though. Um, but yeah. This is where Liz Stride met her end, just that spot down there. It used to be Berner Street, so, and now it's Henry K Street. The Old Gate Pump. Some say, also call it the Pump of Death. Um, do you know what? You can Google a lot of forums and the stories that when Joe the Ripper killed Catherine Eddowes in Mitre Square, he came here and washed his knife, hands, you know, uh, according to legend that apparently people found the blood the next day. Uh, I'm not quite sure, uh, to be honest, but this definitely does have um, a Jack the Ripper link. And then, of course, it's just a stone throw away from uh, where Mitre Square was. 
and um, prostitute church. So this fine looking building is St. Boltoff's without Allgate. Um, so there's two. Um, but this is the, this was commonly known in 1888 as Prostitute Church. And um, basically as many as 1,200 would, would be circling this. It would be like a cattle market. Uh, so when Jack the Ripper killed Liz Stride and wanted to, uh, you know, cause he didn't quite finish what he'd done with the first one, then um, he came here because, you know, this was the place to find prostitutes. And uh, he found poor Catherine Eddowes, who was probably circling this. But, uh, yeah, prostitute church, St. Boltoff's. So when Catherine Edo was released from Bishop Gate Police Station, um, my guess is she uh, headed back to Prostitute Church. Uh, I'm convinced that's where she met Jack. So the last time Catherine Edo was seen alive was um, was here. So three guys come and uh, the senior talked to a guy, which was probably he was Jack. So this is St. James's Passage, but back in 1888 it was really narrow, yeah. you know, all this, that wasn't here, and uh, so I'll show you the murder spot, so out of the five locations, this is the only one that has any kind of reference or memorial if you like, I mean that is obviously a Jack the Ripper tour there, but um, so this is Mitre Square, Always very busy for yuppies having a drink. So, of course, that was Catherine Eddowes. A lot of people will think, oh, Jack's, um, you know, when I, when I kind of started getting interested in the case, I was convinced they all spoke like Anita Dobson from Stepney, but I mean, she was from Birmingham, Litstride was from uh, Sweden. Annie Chatham was from Wimbledon. I don't think any of them were, were actually fact cockneys, you know, real East Enders. But uh, the murder spot, I will show you. So Catherine Eddowes, I mean, this is known as, or it was, obviously it's changed now. There used to be flower bed there, but this was known as Ripper's Corner. And apparently this is the most haunted of all Jack the Ripper murder location spots. So Catherine's body was found exactly just there. And uh, some say on the anniversary, you know, uh, that this corner lights up and a lot of, a lot of uh, stories which are kind of hard to believe. But uh, yeah, apparently this is extremely haunted. And uh, a couple of years back, I actually, slept rough there <laughs> I, uh, I got very drunk man I would never have had the bottle to do it but uh, it's changed so much and uh, of course the double event murders which I showed you earlier Liz Strides was a, is, um, a school and uh, today this is a school but that was the spot where poor Catherine Eddowes was found mutilated uh, nose cut off possibly tried to cut one of her ears off um, yeah so obviously I'm showing you the murder locations but I just want to show you for people follow the ripper case to show you exactly where everything is and it's all in a stone throw away so this is um, Christ Church which was built by Christopher Wren um, so all the Ripper victims and Jack himself would have looked up and seen that. Uh, so that was this building here was where Mary Kelly's flat uh, bed set was. Um, the pub on the on the corner was where she was last seen alive. Well, the, the a witness was stood there and watched basically Mary go off with Jack and was never seen again. 
um, you've got the 10 bells which um, I mean probably all five Ripper victims drank in there the only ones you can say 100% who did were Annie Chapman um, she came in the doorway the night that she was murdered and Mary Kelly that was her patch where she would uh, basically get the uh, hunters and you've got um, the market um, Annie Chapman was killed just down that street so I mean literally I mean that David Kira that was the pawn shop where Catherine Edo pawned the boots uh, her body was found with the um, the slip and everything's just so close it's all in um, like a stone throw away that's Itchy Park the small faces made a song in 1967 about it that's where Jimmy Greaves when he kind of fell on hard times just sit and, and booze in there and it's all just uh, so close so that's Spitalfield Market um, so that was built the year before the murders and I think it was opened by Queen Victoria so I'm just in a uh, Ten Bells pub kind of really the kind of seen as number one Jack the Ripper pub um, probably all five victims drank in here where they can only prove Annie Chapman and Mary Kelly did um, yeah this is a pub um, apparently Jamie Oliver's great 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 granddad or something used to run it but I'll just show you around so in Jack the Ripper's era the, the till that used to be there um, it really uh, captures the imagination of 1888 still to this day it's supposed to be seriously haunted as well uh, the toilets Lindsay Sibiter the ripperologist said to me there's not enough money on the planet for me to let me sleep in this uh, pub again So on the night of Annie Chapman's death, she uh, came in and stuck her head in the door. And this was Mary Kelly's patch, if you like, to, to uh, get punters. I absolutely love this pub. I always make an effort to uh, come here every day. I'm in London. The Ten Bells, Spitalfields, Jet the Ripper Country. So this is um, murder location number five. Um, some some people say that these lands are where Doss Street went up. But um, yeah, Mary Kelly's room. Uh, I mean, I've spoken to quite a few experts, ripperologists. And they basically say Mary Kelly's room would have been where them where the lifts were. So just just there. Well there. Uh, yeah, there's a, a ripper tour going on now. And if you're around Spitalfields, Whitechapel, Allgate, you just see that all day, every day. Um I counted once and I could see seven in my eye shot so there's a tour guide there and she's seeing the showing the pictures of the bodies and the locations but uh, yeah this is where Mary Kelly's room was just over there so we're here on uh, Golston Street and uh, obviously 
nobody knows who Jack the Ripper was, but the one thing we 100% can say is he stood in that doorway. So um, this is basically where he left the message. Um, so that this this building back in 1888, it was uh, predominantly lived in by Jewish people. Um, so all the architecture, all the building is the exact same, but where he written the Jews are the men that will not be blamed for nothing was just inside that doorway. Uh, of course, Catherine Edo's bit of rag was found just down here, covered in blood and bodily fluids, feces. Um, yeah, so this is exactly where it was. Tubby Isaacs was up there as well. Uh, that that was a iconic. Um, basically, he sold jelly deals and all that kind of thing, and he was in business for like something like ninety-seven years. He just he, uh, he folded about two thousand thirteen, and um, this is actually where they made that. Uh, the Pet Shop Boys filmed West End. What was it? East End Boys and West End Girls. This was on the street as well. But uh, if you have a look at the old pictures of. Um, Golson Street, you can see the exact, you know, this was literally as it was uh, in 1888, obviously without the chip shops and you know, it's quite uh, eerie to think that um, I mean one thing it did to do as well is when he when he killed Catherine Edwards in Mitre Square, it showed his direction, so he was coming back into the East End, he obviously knew the area very very well So today, that's a police station, but back in Jet the Ripper's era, um, I think it was bombed in the Second World War, but the police police station was there. So basically, um, Annie, uh, sorry, Catherine Eddowes, obviously she was arrested for impersonating a police, um, fire engine on this street, uh, and uh, she was locked up, and uh, when she sobered up, she would have actually so she when she said the, the, the famous word good night old cock she would have come through that alley and uh, off down there to Olgate and Mike Square and uh, she met Jack the Ripper but that was the alley that she walked out of so today this is uh, it's an Indian restaurant it's a hotel as well actually but back in 1888 I'll just zoom in. It says the frying pan pub. So this is where Polly Nichols had uh, spent the night drinking um, on the night of a of a death. Um, so this stopped being a pub in 1991. Um, so this is Brick Lane, and there used to be a, um, a hell of a character. And uh, I'm not allowed to say it, so his nickname. So he was known as Darky the C double O N, and um, he was like um, he'd been in the Second World War. Uh, he was a bit of a, a war hero, but he kind of turned his life to crime, if you like. And he was a pimp. He, he was basically like something right out of a, um, a League of Gentlemen sketch. He would kind of walk with his um, hands and apparently carried a gun, but. Uh, he basically was in charge of all the working girls and um, really fascinating character. There's quite a little bit on the internet as well on him. Darky the C double O N. Um, yeah. So this is what you call Itchy Park and um, Spitalfields smack in the, uh, the old East End. Christchurch there, Ten Bells pub there, Annie Chapman would have lived there and uh, so basically if you fall, fell on hard, hard times which most people did in 1888 and you could never get your four pence for the bed or a penny for sleeping over a rope, many people would uh, would sleep in here. Um, so it must have actually been uh, well, a, a graveyard 
and uh, many women, children, must have just cuddled up in here. These days, I think it's uh, a lot of people booze in here. As I said, I've told you there's loads of arms. Jimmy Greaves used to come here in the seventies when he was on the bottle and uh, drink with the undesirables. But um, Jack London come over in 1901 and he did a book called People of the Abyss. Uh, and it basically was about people who lived here. When you've fallen as, as low as you possibly can, you probably end up sleeping in Itchy Park. It's a bit like living in Grover in Middlesbrough these days, but not quite as bad. But uh, Itchy Park, yeah, and uh, this was basically where people slept. So that's Whitechapel High Street, just down there. And so the reason I've come up here, so this is Mulberry Street. Uh, of course, there's probably nothing left of this street from back in 1888. But this is where John Pizer, a.k.a. Lever Apron, lived at the time of the murders. So he was um, a suspect kind of early doors, if you like, and, you know, he was proved innocent. Yeah, there was nothing to do with it and um, I think he got a massive amount of money for his troubles but yeah this is Mulberry Street and uh, yeah at one point he was actually um, you know when you see Frankenstein you see the, the vigilantes hunting him with the pitchforks and the, the lanterns and that yeah that, that that's what was um, a little for a short time to John Pizer and uh, of course he never had nothing to do with the murders but this is where he lived it's just literally a stone throw away from Whitechapel High Street. So just in Allgate, uh, where Mickey Duff came from. So that's the White Hart pub, uh, and that has been there since, it's, it's one of London's oldest taverns, somewhere like 1721 been there. But um, I tore out the old Jewish East End, and there's not much of it, but if you kind of keep your eyes open, it's a Star of David. And, uh, I mean, look at that there. Jack the Ripper to her. It's like, um, you don't go to Transylvania and not talk about Dracula. And uh, you wouldn't come to Whitechapel and, you know, it's just impossible to miss Jack the Ripper. No. So this is the Working Lads Institute. Obviously it's um, some kind of grocery store now. Um, well back in 1888, um, so this had many of the inquests. So there's people think there was the talk about the canonical five, um, but just because, you know, in total there was 11. Um, murders that were never solved. The Jack may have killed all 11, or he may have killed three or four, and there uh, could have been others a hand. But um, five inquests were here. Uh, Polly Nichols was one, Annie Chapman was one, and a couple of the others like Martha Tabram and Alice Coles. So um, yeah, and so the, the inquests were literally in that building, like in that, that room, so I'm told. So the Working Lads Institute, just on Whitechapel High Street. So if anyone's watched the uh, Jack the Ripper Michael Caine film, it kind of gives off the impression at the start that Dr Llewellyn was, um, could have been capable of committing the murders. Um, of most, a lot of the East Enders has um, been gone and was bombed in the Second World War. But Dr Llewellyn's surgery uh, obviously them buildings have been rebuilt since but his um, his surgery would have stood exactly there where that I think it's like an Asian sweet shop it's just uh, a stone throw away from the Blambegger but that was Dr Llewellyn's surgery he uh, performed on a couple of the murders such as Polly Nichols and that was where exactly his surgery was just there.
So I'm just on White, Whitechapel High Street and uh, many of the elite level Jet the Ripper experts are convinced that when he killed Polly Nichols, literally just out the back of there, he would have come through here and uh, found himself and basically made himself disappear on Whitechapel High Street. You know, there would have been people, I mean, if he'd have come out and it'd have been full of blood, he could have come out here and just basically mixed in and it could have looked like a butcher or whatever. But, uh, wood buildings, that's the first time I've ever seen it open. But, uh, yeah, many ripperologists are convinced this is where Jack made his escape route. Wood buildings, Whitechapel Road. So, since um, Bangladesh got their own independence from Pakistan in 1978, um, that was when you've seen a lot of the, um, you know, the East End was predominantly, the main immigrants were uh, the Jews, Jewish people, and um, obviously these days it's uh, Bangladeshi people, as you can see, but I mean, I'm doing a book at the minute on Mickey Duff, and uh, I've researched a little bit into the old Jewish East End, and that's what I'm talking about there. So that statue, I'm sure you can read it. So that was erected 1911, so well over 100 years ago. That's the. Uh, Royal London Hospital, the town hall's in front of it, but all that is the hospital. That building there was where John Merrick, the elephant man, made, made a living from. So I've took you around uh, all five murder spots, um, one or two other bits as well. I've done it so many times over the years. Um, I'm sat in Mitre Square now, and uh, yeah, I, I just find not a lot of people will probably get it. You know, it's like Whitechapel, Allgate, Spitalfields. Uh, it's just something really magical, particularly if you're uh, you're interested in a lot of the things that I've just showed you. Um, as I said, they're all they've all changed beyond recognition now, but there's still that kind of really eerie feeling that you know once upon a time literally just there was uh, was where the most infamous notorious uh, an unsolved serial killer carried out his handiwork um, it's uh, I think I described it in my book there's something about Whitechapel is it's it's like um it's a story that you never tire because of course the final chapter is ripped out uh, and on Scotland Yard's files officially there's 167 suspects there's probably three or four hundred um but a lot of them are ridiculous and you're just like have a day off mate Oscar Wilde royal family the elephant man uh, you know, some people are conv convinced Walter Sickett was. I've even heard Gandhi was. It's, um, you know, it, it all ties in for a good movie and that Jack the Ripper, Michael Caine film, it was the Queen's Doctor. But, um, yeah, that, I mean, that was never even spoken of till about 1970, almost 100 years after it. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, as I said, I'm not really an expert and I'm certainly no camera guy. But uh, I'm just a guy who's got a lot of interest in, uh, in, the, in the autumn of terror. And uh, every time I'm in London, I always swing by. Let us know what you think. Let us know your comments below. Thanks for watching.